Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concepts, Simply Explained. All right, part 24, SVM classification. Now let's talk about the hard and soft margin. In the previous episode, part 23, we covered some basic definitions for SVM. We said that what is a hyperplane and how we can calculate the perpendicular distance from that hyperplane. We said the goal in SVM is to find the right hyperplane, either in a regression or a classification setup. In this episode, part 24, we're going to discuss how we can find the right hyperplane. And we're going to do it in the classification setup first, and later on we're going to expand the idea for regression. So let's start with the definition of hard margin, uh, MMC, maximum mar margin classifier, and soft margin, SVC. Okay, starting with the hard margin, MMC, maximum margin classifier. So MMC is a hyperplane that among all the separating hyperplanes out there, will find the one that makes the biggest gap, the largest margin between two classes. So let's look at a, a classification problem. We have X1, feature one, feature two, and classes are the two classes, basically green and red. So let's, let's review some terminology here. This line is going to be our maximum margin hyperplane or maximum margin classifier. The dashed lines are going to be our margins so the observations on the margins are support vectors. So here we have two support vectors. And then the, finally, the distance between these support vectors are going to be our uh, margin. So we, we are trying to maximize that margin. So MMC, maximum margin classifier, is basically this hyperplane that maximizes the gap between two classes. So why are we trying to maximize the gap in the train set? Because if we find the maximum gap of the observations of the classes in the train set, we hope that the model is going to do a decent job in the test set as well. So that's why we're looking for the maximum gap. Okay, just uh, remember that adding, uh, you know, adding more training data away from the support vectors will not affect the boundary, right? So if I add a bunch of red observations here away from the uh, let's say the hyperplane, or if I add a bunch of green observations here, it's not going to make any difference in terms of what is the functional form, what is the equation for the uh, for the maximum margin classifier. Okay, now let's see how does MMC do the job. So what is the optimization problem? The core idea of a hard margin is to maximize the margin, the gap, under the constraint that the classifier, the hyperplane, does not make any mistake, does not allow for any kind of misclassification within the margin, right? So let's look at this example. So it seems that if the red line is our, is our hyperplane, the, it, it's, it's our MMC, maximum margin classifier, it doesn't allow for any kind of mis, mis, misclassification, right? So let's say if I had another blue observation here, because the blue observation is on the wrong side of the hyperplane, it's going to be misclassified, right? So even though it's blue, but if I use this red hyperplane, it's, the model is going to predict green, which we know that it's wrong, it's misclassified. So if that's the case, and if you are using MMC, the, the new hyperplane is going to rotate in a way that the model does not allow for any kind of misclassification. So maybe the entire thing is going to rotate like this. So this is going to be the near support vectors, and this is going to be the new hyperplane, right? So with this new hyperplane, as you can see, there is no misclassification. So the core idea of the hard margin is that that hyperplane is, does not allow for any kind of misclassification, okay? So SPM tries to pick the most robust model, specifically the MMC, try to pick the most robust model by finding the W stars and V stars. Guys, remember, at the end of the day, if I have the W stars and B stars, we are done. We can come up with a functional form for the F hat, which is a function of W and, uh, w and X. Of course, W and B, there is a bias term in X, right? And then uh, we can make classification based on this functional form. And uh, so MMC tries to pick the most robust one among all those uh, classifiers that yield the correct classification, right? 
So now let's see uh, how it's done numerically. So if the numerically defined blue circles on the margin as plus one and the green circles as minus one, so here the blue circles are plus one and the green circle is minus one, then any good linear model is expected to satisfy the following constraint, right? So the idea that we use plus one and minus one, it, this is just for mathematical convenience. You could have used zero one, you could have used plus five minus five, but just for mathematical convenience, we're gonna use plus one minus one, and you will see the reason why we use this plus one minus one. With that, let's do some calculations here over the graph. So imagine, Imagine the, the so this is the equation. This let's call this blue margin. So this is our blue margin, right? And the equation for the blue margin is w x plus b is exactly equal to plus one. And the equation for green margin is w x plus b is exactly equal to minus one, right? And then if you want to calculate the perpendicular distance between the two, between these two lines. We know we know the equation for that, right? So if you watch the first part, part 23 of this lecture series, you see that the perpendicular distance is going to be something like this, right? It's going to be the f hat of x divided by you know, square root of w1 squared plus w2 squared, okay? And then here, basically, the, 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 the line in between is our hyperplane, and the equation for the hyperplane is wx plus b is equal to zero. Okay, so the numerator, the distance from uh, from the blue margin from uh, uh, of the blue margin from the green margin is going to be two, right? And then we need to divide it by some. You know, this is our Euclidean distance, right? The L2 norm uh, of the weight matrix. Uh, so divided by basically the magnitude of weight. So the the, the margin, the gap between uh, the support vectors are going to be equal to 2 divided by basically the magnitude of the weighting matrix, right? So in order to maximize this gap, this is equivalent to minimizing any function of w, right? So if I minimize any functional form of w, uh, then the, of course that, that functional form needs to be strictly increasing and monotone and etc. But if I, in simplistically saying, if I minimize w, it's as if I'm maximizing 2 divided by w, right? So this is number one thing that I want you to remember. Number two is basically look at the, all the observations, the blue circles, right? Remember, the blue, blue circles are labeled as plus 1. So the idea is that all these blue circles to the left of the hyperplane are, should have a distance larger than the one, right? So how do we write it mathematically? We say, okay, if y is equal to plus one, the blue circles, this should hold, right? Uh, what is the first part? The first part is that basically if I plug these blue dots here, I get a distance. So it says that the distance from the hyperplane should be greater than plus one. So these are the blue circles. And for the green circles are all the uh, uh, observations to the right side of the hyperplane here. And the distance should be less than minus one because we labeled these green circles as minus one, right? So anything to the right should be less than minus one. Anything to the left should be greater than plus one, okay? Then now it's going to become uh, more straightforward why we are using plus one and minus one. Let's say I have two constraints, right? These are the two constraints. I'm gonna go ahead and write the, them using one single constraint, right? So just look at this one. If I go ahead, let me erase these extra things. If I go ahead and multiply the first constraint by y, what do I get? Remember, yi for the first constraint is, uh, constraint is always positive, positive one. So basically nothing is going to happen, right? If I multiply both sides by plus one, so I have this one greater than plus one, right? So the, the first constraint is going to remain unchanged. What if I multiply the second constraint by yi? Remember, yi for the second constraint is going to be equal to minus one. So if I multiply both sides of this equation to minus one, so I get this part, 
and this part multiplied by minus 1 is going to be plus 1 and the, and the direction of the inequality is going to change right and as if you pay attention both of these constraints are going to be narrowed down to one constraint right so overall we have two things we are maximizing the gap which is equivalent to minimizing a function of the monotone function of weight and over this constraint which we reduce them to one constraint so let's let's sum it up uh, sum it all and uh, write the optimization problem so here's the optimization problem we are minimizing the 1 divided by 2 of the L2 norm of weights to the power of 2, right? So this is just a monotone function of W, right? And again, for mathematical convenience, we do 1 divided by 2, multiply this W to the power of 2. Because down the road, if we take gradient, so these 2 is going to cancel out with the 2 in the denominator, and it's going to give us easier time to calculate, the, to look for a closed form solution, right? And so we are maximizing the gap by this optimization problem and what is the constraint so why I multiply this should be greater than 1 and as you can as we talked about it here this constraint already has these two constraints inside it so that's why we do the why we define the y is equal to plus 1 and minus 1 so that's just for the mathematical convenience Okay, there's one thing that I want to emphasize in MMC, Maximum Margin Classifier Optimization Problem. The idea is that we can either find, we can either satisfy this constraint or not. And this constraint means that we are not allowing for any kind of misclassification. Remember, all the observations should be uh, to the right side of the hyperplane, to the correct side of the hyperplane, right? We are not allowing for any kind of misclassification within the margin, right? So there is either an answer for this optimization problem or no. If there's an answer, we can come up with a closed form solution. If there is no answer, we have to sacrifice the idea of using hard margin. And so we are going to expand this idea of hard margin to the soft margin. Okay. So why should we go beyond the hard margin? And sometimes why we have to go beyond the hard margin? There are a couple of common cases that we're going to explore here. Number one reason is that maybe the data is non-separable, right? There's overlap between observations, so between classes. Imagine in this classification problem, we have x1 and x2. And by the way, in all the examples that we have in this set of slides, as you can see, the x1 and x2 are all the features are scaled, right? And the reason that we are going to scale the features is because we are calculating a distance between observations. And the rule of thumb is that when you're calculating a distance, either Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, and any kind of machine learning model, uh, we would be better off uh, to scale the features because we want to make sure that uh, the, uh, the features, we're comparing apples to apples when you're calculating the weight. Okay. So let's look at uh, the case where the data is non-separable. So I want you to pay attention to the red, uh, to the uh, yeah, to the blue circles versus let's call them purple circles, and try to come up with the hard margin. Try to come up with the maximum margin classifier. So can can you find an answer? Whatever you do, you cannot find a solution, right? So simply the optimization problem that we saw on the previous slide. That that become infeasible. There is there is no solution to that to that optimization problem, simply because the condition cannot be satisfied, and we cannot find a simple line that can perfectly separate the labels from each other. No matter how we rotate, how we change the coefficients, how we change the b, how we change the w's, right? So if I do anything like this, there's going to be misclassifications here and there, right? So to simply when the data set is non-separable, the, the hard margin is not going to work. So we have to, ex we have to just use soft margin instead of hard margin. So this is one case. Another example is when the data is noisy, even though uh, we can find the MMC, we can find the maximum margin classifier, but we would be better off if we use the idea of soft margin instead of hard margin. Let's look at this example. Imagine we have blue observations and versus purple observation. And as you can guess, this is going to be our maximum margin hyperplane, right? Maximum margin classifier. So, and let's say these are the margins. So we have this margin, right? 
So how many support vectors do I have in this example? One, two, three. So we have three support vectors and this is our maximum margin. So it seems that the previous optimization problem that we saw on the previous slide, it does have a solution, right? But the idea is that if you use a hard margin, hard margin is going to be super sensitive. It's going to be very sensitive to outliers, right? Uh, or to the to the observations close to the hyperplane. So let's 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 look at an example. Imagine we have another blue observation just here. Look at let's look at the second graph. So if I add a blue observation here, then in order to satisfy those constraints, my MMC is going to rotate completely from this line to this line. You see, so this is a huge rotation in terms of you no know, W1, W2, and etc. Right, uh, guys? Again, this MMC is going to be completely identified by finding W star one, W star two, and B star. So if I rotate these W stars, I will get another MMC. And here, if I, if you want to stick to that MMC hard margin, if you want to make sure that we are not allowing for any kind of misclassification this MFC is going to shift dramatically. So as you can see, it is sensitive to these points, right? So we, we don't necessarily like this one because, uh, because maybe one simple observation, one single observation is going to rotate our uh, MMC a ton. So in order to get a more robust model, maybe we need to sacrifice somehow, get rid of this observation, you know, give some slack to the model, use soft margin instead of hard margin. So uh, that's the idea of using soft margin versus hard margin. So let's talk about it in more details. So what's the solution to the problems that we discussed in the previous slide? The solution is we can extend the concept of a separating hyperplane in order to develop a hyperplane that almost separate the classes using a so-called you know, soft margin. So we have to go from hard margin to soft margin in order to uh, basically fix the issues that we talked about, right? So this generalization of the maximum margin classifier, the hard margin, using a soft margin is also known as support vector classifier, SVC. So remember, MMC, maximum margin classifier, is used for hard margin, and SVC is when we go from hard margin to soft margin, okay? Uh, so the core idea is that it could be worthwhile to misclassify a few training observations in order to do a better job in classifying the remaining observation. Now let's look at another example, but here uh, I'm going to label the observations from 1 to 10. So it's uh, so we have 10 observations and uh, number 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are class red. And then eight, nine, ten, and seven are class blue, right? So look at that. In this case, I can't find the MMC, right? So basically, if I want to find the MMC, I should do something like this. So let's find the MMC such that it's going to maximize the distance from classes, basically the supporting vector. So maybe we get something like this. Uh, maybe this is a maximum margin. So this is going to be the hyperplane, right? I label it as one, right? But as you can guess, this hyperplane is sensitive. It's sensitive to observations close to, to close to the margins, right? Uh, and we say that it, this hyperplane is less stable because it's using only two support vectors, this one and this one. Now, if I just do expand the idea of hard margin to soft margin, we can get a we can come up with something like this. So this is going to be the classifier. This is our soft margin. And we are going to allow for a couple of observations to be on the wrong side of the margin. So let's label them because here's the terminology is going to be a little tricky. So this is our hyperplane, hyperplane. This is margin. Okay, and this is also margin. Now, if you pay attention, observations number two, five, three, four, and one 
are on the correct side of the hyperplane, right side of the hyperplane. Observation 2, 4, 5, 3, and 6 are on the right side of the margin as well, so correct side of the margin. Is everybody following? Okay. So these are on the correct side of the margin, but observation number one is on the wrong side of the margin. So wrong side of margin, but correct side or right side of hyperplane. So this terminology is going to become important. And for the blue observations, as you can guess, observation 7, 9, 10, are, and 8 are on the correct side of the hyperplane, but observation number 8 is on the wrong side of the margin, so wrong side of the margin. Okay, Because if this is a blue margin, 8 is on the wrong side of the margin. However, it's, it's on the correct side of the hyperplane, right? So there is no misclassification in the traditional definition of misclassification going on here because at the end of the day, we have a hyperplane. Let me highlight that hyperplane. We have a hyperplane. Anything above that, we're going to call it blue. Anything below that, we're going to call it red. So there's nothing wrong in terms of classification. However, uh, there are a couple of observations, namely 1 and 8 here, that are on the wrong side of the margin okay so if you remember in the mmc uh, that restriction in the optimization problem does not allow for number one observation number one and eight to happen right so if if we, if we give the model some slack is if we tell the algorithm somehow just ignore number one and eight it's okay to for observations to be within the margin to be on the wrong side of the margin right so if you say if you somehow translate this idea to the computer we're going to come up with this uh, yellow hyperplane. And why we use ye this yellow hyperplane? Because let's look at the um, support vectors. So this is going to be, if I'm using this, if I'm looking at the this one, so let me use green, if this is the hyperplane. So what are the support vectors? This observation, this observation, maybe five is on the, on the margin, three is on the margin, and all the observation within the margin. So we have observation number one, two, three, five, eight, and nine. So one, two, three, five, eight, and nine. These are our support vectors. So now we have uh, six support vectors compared to two support vectors if you use the hard margin. Remember, if you use the hard margin, we get something like this. Okay, so let me erase them. So having more support vectors, we're going to end up with more stable model, more stable, more robust in the train set. So it's going to perform better in the test set as well. Okay. So this is one example. Another example that we cannot literally find the, uh, find the MMC solution is this one. So let's see, is this one, the one on the right, right? So let's say I add two new observations to the, to, to the data that we explored in the previous slide. So let's say I added this observation number 11 and observation number 12. Okay, so let's quickly relabel the, the margin and hyper, uh, no, hyperplane. So remember, this is going to be our hyperplane. And these are the margins. Okay, so margin. Okay, so let's do some exercise together. So we have observation number one. So let, let's use the right color. So basically let's uh, use red. Number one is on the wrong side of margin, right? Because this is a red margin, it's on the wrong side of the margin. However, it's on the correct side of the hyperplane. Observation number eight, the same story. Number eight is on the wrong side of the margin. Observation number 11, however, is on the wrong side of the hyperplane. It 
So this is misclassified. misclassified. Observation number 12 is going to be on the wrong side of hyperplane, right? So 11 and 12, these are, uh, let me highlight them. So 11 and 12, these are misclassified because if this is a classifier, if this is our the, the, uh, support vector classifier, number 11 is going to be classified as blue, which is wrong. Number 12 is going to be labeled as, uh, as uh, red, which is also wrong. So these are misclassified. So the idea here is that we're going to allow for these, these misclassifications as well, right? So if you allow for these misclassifications, then we're using soft margin, right? And uh, so what are the support vectors here? At the end of the day, if this is our margin, we have one, well, let me use the right brush. Uh, so this is support vector. These are all support vectors. Okay, so, in this case, the, well, I think in this case, if you add this observation number 11 and 12, coming up with a hard margin is going to be almost infeasible. Well, actually, it's going to be infeasible, right? So we cannot find a hard margin if we add number observation 11 and 12 to the data set. So we have to use the soft margin. Okay, now let's see what is the, how does the computer, computer actually find the soft margin? What is the optimization problem for the SVC? So here is the SVC optimization problem. So the soft margin classification adds a penalty. So let's show this penalty term with C to the objective function for observations in the training set that are misclassified. So in essence, the SVM algorithm, well, let's, let's call it SVC, will choose a decision boundary that optimizes the trade-off between a wider margin and a lower total error penalty. So the idea is that let's make that hard margin uh, soft in the sense that we allow for some misclassification, but overall the error term of the model uh, is going to decrease, right? So let's look at the constraints. So the constraints are going to be pretty much the same as the MMC, but we're adding the slack variable. So slack variables xi, so we, let's, let's call this xi, uh, this allows for some observations to fall on the wrong side of the margin, okay? Not necessarily the hyperplane, on the wrong side of the margin, uh, but we'll penalize them by multiplying them to the penalty term, whatever. So we, def we define it as the C, cost of misclassification, right? So here's the optimization problem. And as you pay attention, this optimization problem is very much similar than uh, compared to MMC, but the difference part is here. Uh, well. Let me use the highlight. So this is, so maybe, maybe, this is the difference, right? This part and this part. So let's let's try to understand what is the algorithm in, is doing there. So these are the slack variables. Let's actually look at a bunch of those misclassifications. So paying attention to this example here, we have X1 and X2. There are two classes, class green, class red. And this is our hyperplane, this is margin, and this is also margin, right? As you can see, this observation is on the wrong side of the hyperplane, okay? So this means that it's on the wrong side of the green margin as well. And this observation is on the wrong side of the uh, hyperplane as well. So it means that it's misclassified. But it's not necessarily only these two points. So let's say I have a red observation here. So the red observation is on the wrong side of the red margin. And then we can define this xi for red. And uh, let's say we have a green observation here. This green observation is on the wrong side of the green margin. So this is our xi for green here. So as you can guess, these two new observations that I just draw, they're not on the wrong side of the hyperplane, but they are on the wrong side of the margin. So we, call, we, we need to give them some slack as well. We are going to allow for them. So it's okay to have these observations within the margin or dismiss classifications, but we're gonna penalize them, right? So we're gonna penalize those size by multiplying them uh, by a positive, let's say, cost function, right? It costs uh, the positive C, number C. 
And uh, so this is how we are going to penalize this minimization problem, right? Because remember, we are trying to minimize the objective function, but now we are adding some positive number to that, right? So this is going to matter what is what is the, so the, actually this c is going to become a, one of the hyperparameters that we need to tune for for the svc model so this is the objective function but what are the changes in the, uh, the constraint so the constraint this part is pretty much the same right so the new part is this so now we're going to say that okay you don't need to be exactly on the right side of the margin i'm going to give you some slack right and that's how we're going to do it, right? So we say, okay, you don't need to be, so hey, you, this one, you don't need to be on the right side of the margin. I'm going to allow you to be within this margin. So I'm going to give you some slack, okay? So that's why we have one minus xi on the right-hand side. Okay. So this is the optimization problem for SVC, basically the idea of soft margin. Okay, so let's wrap up this relatively long video by going over the regularization parameter in SVC. Okay, so let me remind you of the optimization problem. Uh, we said that we are trying to minimize in SVC, we are trying to minimize this objective function plus adding some costs to the summation of the slacks, right? Total slacks. So basically the sum of slack means total distance of points on the wrong side of the margin, right? Now, so we're gonna use this C, uh, we define it as cost of misclassification and we treat it as a regularization parameter. This is going to be a parameter that's going to help us control the bias variance trade-off, right? So let, let's see. So imagine we have a data set, right? and we can have a very wide margin to a very narrow margin, okay? Now let's see how does C affect the, the, the width of the margin, okay? So if C is a small, if C is a small, what does it mean? It means that we can, so this C is a small, it means that we can have large slack, right? We can have lots of slack, right? If we can have large slack, it means that we can come up with a wider margin, right? So we can come up with wider margin. So maybe we're here, C is small. If C is small, the margin is wider. So if you pay attention, this is these are the margins. And as you can see, the margin is very wide. So if the margin is wide, the bias is going to be high. This is model bias, right? So because on average, maybe we are not finding the best classifier. We are not capturing the pattern in the model. So the bias is going to be high. However, the variance is going to be low. The model variance is going to be low, right? Because if I use another subsample, the, the, well, using this very wide margin, the hyperplane is not going to change that much, right? So the, it's not going to rotate that much. Now, if the C is large, so let me use red. So if C is large, then because this is a minimization problem, uh, the algorithm is going to try to reduce these slacks, right? If you want to reduce those slacks, we have to come up with narrower margins, right? So let's say maybe we are here. So here C is uh, large, okay? Then the, because we're not allowing for the, sum, the, the total the distance uh, of the points on the wrong side of the hyperplane, uh, on the wrong side of the margin, so basically the slacks, the summation of the slacks should not be that high. So for that reason, we need to have a lower, uh, mar lower gap, right? Let's say a uh, narrower margin. So if you have narrower margin, the model bias is going to be small because on average, we're hitting at the target where we're capturing the pattern, but the model uh, variance is going to be large, right? Because if I use another subset, uh, yeah, of, in our, if I use another basically draw from the from the from the population or from the train set, uh, this line may rotate a lot. Okay, so maybe it goes to this one, this one, and it's etc. Et okay. Okay. So um, in order, to, so if if you want, if you need a refresher uh, in terms of what is model bias, models, what is model variance, please make sure that you watch the previous videos. Uh, yeah, on this uh, on, on, on this play, YouTube playlist. Okay. Basically, you can you can watch part five 
of this machine learning concepts lecture series where, where I talk about the details of what is model bias, what is model variance. Okay, all right, so that was it. This uh, So, so far we talked about uh, the motivation of, of SVM and uh, we saw the, how the, what is the algorithm behind SVM in classification. We started with hard margin, we call it MMC, max margin classifier. And we said that sometimes there is no solution to this MMC problem. And, and sometimes we want to get a more robust uh, model. We have to go from the idea of hard margin to soft margin. So we call it SVC. And in the next episode, we're going to see that even sometimes we cannot use the soft margin uh, concept alone. Uh, we have to even extend the idea of soft margin to some other model. So we're going to call that optimal model uh, SVM. And that's where we're going to combine the idea of soft margin plus a very interesting trick, which we call it kernel trick. So let's see what is SVM um, using kernel trick. So uh, until then, see you in the next video.